Well, I know right now you're very shocked and you are like, what? Yes, that's very true. Money is very spiritual and this is how you can attract it. This is kind of an information that you tend to think like I'm talking about spirituality and preaching and what have you. No, this is a disclaimer. This is not a preaching. I'm going to give you a secret that you have never understood. And by the way, by the end of this video, you'll be like, what? I have never thought of exactly that. So how about we go into the business, okay? But guess what? This information I'm sharing with you for free. I'm not charging you anything. The only thing that I need in return from you, just as a favor, it's a request, is to subscribe to this video. How I mean to this channel. How do you do that? Down below there is a small button written subscribe. Hit that multiple button and also make sure that you like this video. By only doing that, you'll be notified whenever I upload a new good video. I do so each and every day. Okay, fine. Let's get into the business. Now, let me just give you a very simple example to explain to you why money is very spiritual. And that what you see, when you, once you take money and look at it, that what you see, it is a physical dispensation of a spiritual thing that is in existence. Okay? What do I mean by that point? I bet I've not lost you actually. Okay, now, take this example. Back then, if you can watch my very old videos, I used to work in a construction industry. I was a painter. I was doing all those kind of thing interior design and what have you and i used to have guys whom we call them here in kenya fundis or masons or what kind of view okay now this is a thing uh sometimes but they used to think about money away from kitambo so i used to gather those guys and tell them hey guess what guys um we're being paid like a thousand bob each and every day so how about we can be able to organize ourselves by the time we get our salary on saturday we used to be paid per week uh we can be able to do something if you can gather right and be able to channel this money towards something we can be able to progress and be able to do something about ourselves and when everyone do not have the money let's say i'm selling that idea on monday then everyone actually tends to agree with me everybody we are shaking hands and saying, yeah, that's a very amazing, good idea. Joseph, we like that. Let's go for it. Okay. The moment we get money on Saturday, I am telling you, believe you not, and I believe you have ever tried to do that with people. People change their character. Guess what? Money evokes emotions and personalities. You get the what? Now, money amplifies that what is made up inside of you. People change their characters. You cannot even realize when people are getting out. So I used to see some people even disappearing and I was gathering away. We were six of us. When Where are the other people? I don't know where they even went and all those kind of things. And then they show up on Monday with the groomy faces. All the money has been utilized. And I ask them, what exactly happened? Now, this is my point. Money is very, very, very spiritual. There is that inner part of us that it evokes and actually magnifies of who we are. Remember one thing, money does not change anybody's character. What it does, it just elevates or amplifies your character. If you are humble, you tend to be more humble. If you are philanthropist, you're going to be do that. If you are mean and stingy, you're going to do that. If you are this kind of an individual who is intelligent, smart, you're going to use that money to actually acquire more information and that kind of a thing. So money evokes that sort of a spirit deep inside of us to a point whereby we become emotional. By the way, do you know how many people usually talk bad on the comment section whenever I talk about money? They say, who is you to advise, to advise us what you have yourself if you are to apply all those ideas? It evokes a certain personality deep inside of us that is very you know rebellious and all those kind of things now guess one thing now anything that is spiritual anything that is spiritual guess what has two principles these are the principles of being spiritual of anything that is being spiritual number one it actually has a sacred language and number two offers or needs a sacrifice now let me explain my point now Let's say we go to this, the normal spirituality that you guys know about religion and what have you. First of all, there is a certain sacred language that we usually use. For example, if you want to go to God, you use a certain language called the prayer. There is a systematic procedure that you ought to use for you to go before him because it's a spiritual act. The other thing, you ought to have a what? A sacrifice. However, you want to frame this one, but they ought to have a sacrifice. Now, let's now contextualize that information and bring it to finance and money. How exactly can you understand? Now, this is money. <clears throat> okay, this is money. And by the way, do you know? If, do you know even Bible says that you cannot serve God and money at the same time? Okay, and by the way, the love of money they say the root of all evil. I did not say money is the root of all evil. No, the love of it is the root of all evils. Money actually is perceived as a god to some of the people or close to a lot of the people, okay? Because anything that they do, over 95% of the activities that humanity does in this world all revolves around money. So this is like a sort of a god, okay? Now, and I want you to view it from this perspective, okay? Now, this is money you have yourself here. Now, I've said anything that is spiritual has two principles. It has the principle of sacredness and has the sacred language that is and has the principle of sacrifice. Okay, now, this is money. You see, if you want to go to God, you do so through a prayer. 
okay? So if you want to go to money, you have to use a sacred language. And guess what? Who can tell me what the sacred language of money? That's right. The sacred language of money is called budget. Budget is the only sacred language that money understands. Never ever, ever in your life forget that. This is the sacred language that money understands, just like God understands the prayers and water view. And now, what are the sacrifices? The other principle of anything that is uh, spiritual also has to be what? A sacrifice. What do I mean by sacrifice? Here I'm not talking about that what you think. Here I'm talking about sacrifice is when you live in a frugal life, living below your means. Okay, you're doing something that you don't love it. For example, let's say you earn like 40,000. I don't know why I love giving examples of 40,000. Allow me just to use this 40,000. So should we agree from today, Joseph will be using 40,000 each and every time? Agreed. Fine. That is anonymously. Joseph will be using 40,000 as an example. Now, 40,000. Now, see, if you, if you if I tell you live below your means, you see, there is this principle that hovers around and our families tells you, hey, don't ever live in a life that is above your salary. Live according to how much you earn. That's a scam. Why? Because you're not supposed to live as much as you earn. No, you're supposed to live below your means. If you're making 40,000, live a 30,000 kind of a lifestyle. What does that mean? It means there are some things ought to be sacrificed. And whenever you are giving a sacrifice, it's not fun. Come on, guys. Why are you missing this point? Whenever you are giving a sacrifice, it is not fun. It is not. It doesn't make yourself happy. But it brings that what we call sort of a satisfaction deep inside of you. So when I tell you, hey, reduce those number of coffees that you're taking out there. Okay? You can channel that money towards the money market fund. Or maybe say shares or something of sort. Whenever I tell you, hey, guess what? You really do not have to live in that very expensive house just to prove to people that you have money. How about you shift and go to a place and you'll be like, no, 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 Joseph, I just want to live here because it's good. Life is short. I want to make myself happy. Now you are deny what? You're not offering the sacrifice toward the money. So now what does it mean? See, sacrifice anything that you engage such as frugal, you know, living below your means, you know, minimalism, and this is another term that people give it stingy. You have to be as if you're sort of a stingy. And I'm going to give you an example of the, you know, this guy people, uh, these guys whom we call them the wealthy and the what. A lot of people tend to say, hey, the wealthy guys are actually, you know, mean, they are stingy, they cannot even help you and all those kind of things because they understand the principles of the money. See, the principles of the money applies on sacrifice and budgeting. Now, when it comes to sacrifice, I've explained to you what it means. It means you doing that, what you do not love it, but you have a target of a certain period of time. Hey, I'm going to live below my means, and again, I'm going to do what? Be able to invest my cash. Now, what about on the budget? On the budget, this one is actually a self-explanatory. You ought to understand the two aspects of your money. A, you have to understand your income. That's what comes in inside of your house. And number two, you have to understand what we call the expenses. Okay, and the expenses here are precisely we are talking about the RE or the recurrent expenditure. These are the things that actually runs your day to day activities. But never forget this we have two sections of things. You can channel your money in two sections. A, I've been talking about it and I'm, I'm not going to spend any time on it. This RE actually sustains your life, it's for sustainability. Sustainability. And when we talk about uh, the, the, the investments and what have you, that's for the development and what kind of you. So, now, we are done understanding the principles of spirituality when it comes to money. And I've said these are the principles, the sacred language and the sacrifice. And that's how you do it. Now, we are remaining with one thing. How do you attract it? That's the biggest question. So stay with me because now I'm going to show you exactly how now do you attract that kind of money. Because you see, what we do is that just like as we pray to our God... Okay? The way you pray and worship, you see, you try as much as you can to be attractive to them so that when you ask for something, you can be able to get it in return. Well, I know if you're not a believer here, I might have lost you, but just stay around. We're still on finance. Okay. Now, the point is this. How to attract it? There's one thing you should understand when it comes to money. You don't make it. Never. You don't make money. All right? You don't make money. So all the time, make sure that you cross that one out. You don't make money. Why do I say you don't make money? That is the role of the government. Printing and what have you. For you, you don't make money. What do you do? You attract it. You attract money. Now, let me explain to this because I'm, I know I'm about to lose you. Like, how do you attract money? How, how, how do you attract money? Fine. See, one thing that you're supposed to understand, all the money that you're looking for is with people. All right? So here is with people. People are the one, or these are the human beings. The money that you're looking for is not with cows, it's not with the turtles, it's not with nothing. The money that you're looking for is in the people's pocket. All right? Now, you see, when we say we attract, or when we say 
aka making money as you are used to we say hey we are looking for what we call the legal means the legal means of getting what getting money that is inside the people's pocket that's for sure so if you go the illegal way obviously you know what i mean you want to cut the shortcut and what have you and get that money from their pocket without their consent so if you want to get their money from their pockets with their consent that's the legal means now with the legal means for you to get the money that is inside their pocket you ought to do something for them that they also love and remember one thing once you get into the market looking for money do not argue or do not stand from a point of selfish now here is you let me just draw you here okay here is you okay you can be a lady you can be a man you can be anything don't be like hey, why have you drawn a man only why are you, are you addressing men no 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 come on don't bring those issues here okay here is you now the point is this when you get into the market let's say this is a market with a lot of people a lot of people here you know a lot of people here they are they have the money that you're looking for they have the money that you're looking for now if you get into the market and you're telling the people hey guess what guys i really need money i have to pay my school fees i have to pay my rent i have to pay whatever you see i really have to support my parents i have to do all those things you're getting to the market on a selfish selfish perspective okay it's about you it's like you're addressing the entire you know parade all the guys you're telling them hey it's about me i want to make money i want to do this guess what you're presenting yourself as a what as a needy individual and guess what nobody is only that they don't admit to you nobody loves a needy person <laughs> nobody loves a needy person obviously okay now the point is this instead of presenting yourself as a needy individual and which cases presents you as a needy individual is when you walk to people and tell them hey guys would you mind to give me a job would you mind to give me a job by the way i come from a humble background i would like you to support me i do have a sick person somewhere i would like you see you see fine now you are actually eliminating the fact that you are not you are not you are not important to us all what you need us to do is to be pity upon you and help you but our equation you have not put us in your equation of this money kind of a thing no that's not the perspective of getting to the market get into the market with the perspective of hey this is what guys i can solve this is what guys i can do and all those kind of things and this is actually a perception that most of the business people usually have it so you get into the market and the perception of i'm aiming to making 2300 per day i'm aiming at take making 10000 in a day i'm making at making 100000 uh, you know 100000 a day as a profit you see it's all about you 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 don't tell me hey guess what uh, in this particular area i have identified a certain weakness there is a gap that i can be able to fill hey, these guys we have more than 100 people in this locality these people do not have shoes and if they have the shoes the shoes is not actually of good quality if i can actually be able to solve the problem of them having shoes these guys are farmers they have good money then i can able to get the money from their pockets now you're talking the language of both of you first of all before you sell anything present how it gonna solve their problem way before it actually solves yours because remember one thing when it comes to business you are paid last when you're employed you're paid first that's what you're supposed to understand solve their problems and they'll be ready to actually do what make money for you or rather give the money that they have to you is as simple as that so that's now how you attract money you don't make money making money is the role of the government so what do i mean i know probably you feel like okay joseph you've really talked much but i haven't gotten the point like like give us a me mechanical thing like how to attract money fine now it's you and you add valuing yourself you add value to yourself if you do not have skills find skills that you can monetize if you do not have not job this is where people get it wrong. You think I'm talking about you going out there with your papers and telling them, hey, I'm a qualified this kind of an individual. I want you to employ me because I that's not what I mean. I mean tell people there is that god-given thing deep inside of you that you can actually utilize and use to make money as much as you can so the point is this make sure that at least you get the skills that you can be able to monetize and again when you get into the business if you want to talk about business then talk about you solving their problems that way now you attract money why because it's a spiritual thing and i've given you the two principles of spirituality when it comes to anything that is spiritual that is the it has to have a spiritual language and also something called the sacrifice incorporate those things and you'll be able to be as shocked or astonished on how much you can be able to make potentially in this society so Focus on getting the skills first, then after that. If you're employed right now and you're watching this video from your boss's Wi-Fi and whatever, make sure that you become a, a, you know, a valuable person in that you know, specific company. And by the way, have you ever met some guys who are very valuable in a certain company to a point whereby you cannot even dare to, to, to fire them? It is true. There are some people, there are some individuals, if you were to you know, you know, so sort of get them out of that given company, the company is gone. And the company actually understands that. So the problem with you is that you always go there, you 
you're frowning, you don't even think about anything, you just don't love your job and all those kind of things. If, then if you do not love your job, then that Wi-Fi that you're using to watch some of the things that is not even important, rather than, you know, such kind of videos and what have you, then you shall supposed to equip yourself with appropriate skills that you can be able to leverage, you know, sort of uh, scale it down and monetize it. All right? So that's exactly how you do it. Hey, guess what, guys? If you would like to get a peace of mind, meaning in you and me having a conversation at a private one so you can always grab my number from the specific uh, this description of this specific video shoot me a call also my email is out there i offer those services and obviously at a cup of coffee's price and again don't forget i got myself some booklets about investments a variety of them okay so you can get a copy goes for only 280 kenya shillings for now it's a goodbye and see you in the next one